At the start of the RBS Six Nations campaign, these sides would have expected to do well after good autumn international results, but what's followed has been disappointing for both countries. France, having lost their opening three fixtures for the first time since 1982 and going into this match under a cloud. Ireland, on the other hand, hoping to avoid a third successive championship defeat for the first time since 1998. And it was the home side who made the better start. After an Irish maul had driven the French back 30 metres, Ireland made the visitors pay from the resultant line-out. The controlled maul was too good for the French to withstand, and it was captain Jamie Heaslip who got the touchdown and the first try of the match. A nerve settler for the Irish, and speaking of nerve settlers, when Paddy Jackson landed the conversion, he must have been a relieved man coming into the game under pressure, having missed some kickable efforts last time against Scotland. 7-0 to Ireland. At the other end, Freddie Michelak had a chance to narrow the margin after 15 minutes, but his kick went wide and the gap remained seven points. After 26 minutes, Michelak did get his and France's first points on the board. The referee Steve Walsh penalised the Irish scrum for collapsing under severe pressure from the French front row and this time the Toulon man got his angles right with the kick to make it seven points to three. Almost immediately Ireland were given the chance to re-establish a seven-point lead when France collapsed the mall and Jackson managed to land the difficult kick in difficult conditions to make it ten points to three. The sort of kick that would boost the Ulster man's confidence. A few minutes later, in the 32nd minute, Jackson had the chance to land another penalty from almost the same position. This one had the same outcome. The crowd, including Johnny Sexton, impressed, and Ireland with a 13 points to three lead, which they held until half time. Into the second half, Ireland had chances to go further ahead. First, Jackson missed with his effort on goal. And then, after some dangerous-looking build-up play, Ireland went backwards, and Rob Kearney tried an optimistic drop at goal that was never going to threaten the scoreboard. On 53 minutes, it was the French who notched the first score of the second half. Ireland scrum, penalised by the referee. And this time, it was Morgan Parra who'd taken on the kicking duties, who fired it over to leave just a converted try between the sides. Ireland 13, France 6. Weather conditions dictated that free-flowing rugby was never going to be on the cards at the Aviva Stadium, and France levelled the match with a try that was more about brute force than finesse. Louis Picamol barging over the line from close range after a quick tap from the big Toulouse number 8. There wasn't too much Ireland could do to stop Picamol. Michelac, back on kicking duty, landed a wonderful conversion to make it 13-all. Late in the game, Ireland thought they might have got a penalty, and Keith Earls seemed to be nudged out of the way by Vincent Debatty as he chased an Owen Redden kick through. But it went up to the TMO, and a 22 metres dropout accrued. The replay would suggest that Ireland looked to have a case. As the game drew towards its conclusion, Irish substitute Owen Redden suffered what looked a very serious leg injury as he was challenged by Christophe Samson. Redden, the latest in a long line of Irish casualties this season. With the game clock past 80 minutes, France had one last opportunity to snatch the win, but Michelac's kick through was too long, and Rob Carney was able to touch it down for the full-time whistle to blow. 13 all, and France's first point of the campaign at the fourth attempt. Much focus on Brian O'Driscoll at the end of what might be his last home game in the green shirt of Ireland. Declan Kidney's men finish their campaign in Rome against Italy. France will need to beat Scotland in Paris to avoid the wooden spoon. Final score in Dublin, Ireland 13, France 13.